So let's say I had the equation 2x plus y is equal to 8. This is an equation, one single equation, with two unknowns. And there's many different xy pairs that would satisfy this equation. Now let's add a second equation, x plus y is equal to 5. And once again, if we only looked at this second equation, there's many different xy pairs that would satisfy it. You could have x is equal to 4, y is equal to 1, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2. Many, many, actually there's an infinite number uh, that would satisfy this right over here. But what's interesting about a system of equations is you're using both of these equations as constraints. You're saying, is there at least one xy pair that would satisfy both of these equations? And as we'll see in many future videos, this is a very useful thing to think about in many, not only fields of mathematics, but in the many fields of knowledge generally. But the focus of this video is to think about why the operations we can perform on either or both of these equations, why they are valid and why they're intuitive. So the first series of operations is when we just try to manipulate one equation by themselves. So for example, we could multiply both sides of this purple equation, this top equation, by negative 1. You would get negative 2x minus y is equal to, we multiply the right side by negative 1 as well, negative 8. Now all I did right over here, this is you could do this even if we weren't thinking about a system, is 2x plus y is truly equal to 8. We're assuming that that is true because they're telling us that's true. So if 2x plus y is equivalent to 8, then the negative of 2x plus y should be equivalent to negative 8. Or another way to think about it, if both of these sides are equal, if I multiply the left side by something, in order for the equality to hold true, I have to multiply the right side by the same thing. And so this equation on the right, this purple equation, is an equivalent equation to our original one. It looks different, but the same xy pairs that satisfy this right equation are going to satisfy this left equation and vice versa. Now another operation that sometimes feels a little bit less intuitive when you first learn it when you're solving systems is when you add two equations together. So for example, we have that purple equation, the, the one that we've now multiplied by negative 1, and now we have our original, I guess that's teal or blue equation, so x plus y is equal to 5. And we learn when we're solving systems of equations that we can get a new equation by adding the two left sides and adding the two right sides. And so you might have seen something like this. When we add the two left sides, let's see, negative 2x plus x would be negative x. And then negative y plus y, well that's just going to cancel out, so we have no y's left. And then that's going to be equal to negative 8 plus 5, which is equal to negative 3. And before I even go on to try to solve this, why were we able to do that? Pause this video and think about that. Well, let me give you an example. If we had started with negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 8, just as a single equation, and if I added 5 to both sides of that, so if I added 5 on the left hand side, and I added 5 on the right hand side, I think that would have made intuitive sense to you. Negative 2x minus y plus 5 is equal to negative 8 plus 5. Hopefully this is a little bit intuitive, because once again, and I'm, I'm really saying the same thing over and over again, the left side is truly equal to negative 8. So if I add 5 to it, it's still going to be truly equal to negative 8 plus 5. So hopefully this makes a little bit of intuitive sense. And the key realization with what we did up here is, we essentially added 5 to both sides. You, say, you might say, wait, no, no, we only added 5 to the right hand side. But remember, x plus y we are saying is equal to 5. So it's just like adding the same thing to both sides of the equation. And then when you do that, that's where we essentially were able to eliminate this y variable, and now we got one equation with one unknown, and then from there you can just do a valid algebraic operation. You could say, okay, I just want an x over here. What if I were to divide both sides by negative one? And once again, because negative x is equal to negative three, if I divide negative one, if I divide negative x by negative one, I also have to divide negative three by negative one in order to maintain the equality. And so then you're going to get x is equal to 3. 
And so that would be the x value of that xy pair that satisfies both. And then to figure out the y value, you would say, all right, if x is equal to 3, I should be able to go back into either of these equations to find the corresponding y value. And it's a little bit easier to go into that second one. You could say, all right, 3 plus y is equal to 5. 3 plus y must be equal to 5. And then, of course, if you subtract 3 from both sides, because once again, we're saying 3 plus y is literally equal to 5, then you're going to get y is equal to 2. And so we found an xy pair that satisfies both equations. And really, everything that we wrote down over here, these are all equivalent statements. One of them's going to be true if and only the other statements, the other equations, are also true. So 2x plus y is equal to 8 and x plus y is equal to 5. If and only if x equals 3 and y equals 2. If and only if negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 8. If and only if negative x is equal to negative 3.